and welcome back to model kit stuff and part four of our build of the Airfix 1350 scale type 45 destroyer which we're modeling as HMS Dragon. So in this video we'll be looking at um, finishing off um, some of the uh, bits and pieces that we started in the last video. So we need to finish off the, the bridge area. We have a little bit of uh, touch up to do on there. Um, we have the bulwarks here that need um, correcting to size, um, filling and, and sanding um, and then we've got some photo etch work to do. So we've got um, railings, you can see I've got a set on there, um, I'll show you how I've gone about that on the other side. Um, so we've got one or two bits of railings to do, um, uh, some little bits of detail work, some more items to add on to the bridge. Um, you perhaps can't see that, I'll get it a bit closer. But we've now got the radon in place um, and we've put these um, these are actually bits of copper wire that have been put in um, because the kit doesn't supply any and if you remember there was a template supplied with the etch to allow us to place these I might not have got the angle exactly right um, it looks a little bit punk rock maybe but um, once they're painted up I think they'll look quite good and certainly more authentic than not having them on so yeah, what I'm trying to do in this next video is to, to get all the final uh, assembly bits on and get us to a point where we can get her in a seascape. So one of the issues we need to tackle is the um, yard arms. So there's four yard arms on each corner of um, the radon mast. Um, so I have some etch replacements which are, are much nicer to scale and, and have a bit of finesse about them. Um, but the kit part um, has a very large slot left for it that um, needs to be filled really. So what I've done is I've cut the kit part off um, so that the tab that goes into the radon tower has then been glued into place. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand that down. And I know I'll remove a bit of the paintwork, but that, that's not a big issue. Then we'll paint it all in so it's nice and smooth. And then we can attach the um, photo etch to it. Now, um, attaching photo etch to paint means that we're gluing to the paint, but none of this is structural. Um, so once it's on, it's not going to get touched again, and, and that bond should be fine. You'll also see this three little um, marks on the side of the tower there. Um, and they've been made to uh, pinpoint the points where um, the navigation lights need to go. Um, so that's the same on, on each side. So that's what we're going to tackle next, um, then we can get um, more of the photo etch on. So I've just completed the jack staffs, uh, and these are um, real hybrids. The base comes from the trumpeter kit, the tops come from the Airfix kit, and the shafts have been replaced with um, some brass rod. Um, and the reason being is that the Airfix ones were bent and distorted and full of flash and the cleanup was going to make was just going to hack them away and the trumpeter ones were massively over scale as is most of the components on that kit so um, yeah we've scratched ourselves a hybrid and I'm quite quite happy with those probably worth just going through what we've done because that's that's the end of the scratch building element pretty much so as we take a look at the the ship we go from from the stern the jack staff um, on the hangar deck was replaced with um, brass rod these two um, radar spreaders were replaced with brass rod this aerial here was replaced with brass rod. These spreaders here on the radome um, and the radome ball are all replaced with brass rod. Um, and then as we move to the front of the ship, if I just turn it around a little bit, we've got some wire used for the aerial. Now, uh, both trumpeter and Airfix get this part of, of it wrong. Um, Trumpeter have the two small bits of photo etch which I've used on the left here. Um, and they're the same size. When you look at 
pictures of HMS Dragon. Um, that second aerial is much longer. Um, so I, I still need to trim that down to size a little bit. It needs to be just a bit shorter than that. Should be about level with um, the base of that um, radar there. So we'll trim that down, but it is longer than the other one. Okay, so I wanted to just show you um, how I'm gonna tackle the railings that goes um, along the, the bow here. Now I don't have a one specific set way of, of tackling railings. It depends on uh, where they are, um, how I go about it. In the instance of this build, um, I think all of the railings uh, you can mount on and, and paint so far. I think the railings that we're going to put on at the, at the stern, um, I might well paint before I put them on. Um, so how I make that decision on, it is on how easy it is to, to get in with a paintbrush once, the, once they're mounted on. Um, you've got to be able to get to both sides quite easily. The advantage of, of putting the railings on before you paint them is you're not having any touch up from, from handling the, the railings. Um, the disadvantage is that sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to, to get in um, with the paintbrush. Um, so it, it all depends um, and, it, and it also depends on the scale, you know, if you're, if you're doing a, a larger scale ship than this you may well want to airbrush those, um, those railings, in which case you really need to do that before you fit them, and except that you might well have a bit of touch up. Um, in this instance, um, these railings will be painted once they're, once they're put in place. So um, what we've done is we've removed them from the um, etched fret using my homemade um, etch removing tool, which is just a number 11 blade that's that's had the end broken off and then a chisel point formed. So that gives me a, a one millimeter chisel point. Um, now, with some etch parts, you can sand them. I find that that's probably not a wise thing to do with um, railings um, because you can, they're so delicate, you're just going to disform them. Uh, so what I've done is, now taking them off, I'm just going along with my knife and, f and just feeling my way along for any tabs that might still be there. And if I find any, I'm just nipping them off. So I'm totally flat. You'll feel if you've got a, a, a little tab there, you can actually feel them better than you can see them. Um, I have already done this, um, this length, but we'll just double check while we're here. Something there, not anymore. Okay, so my next step is to just dry fit them so I'm clear in my mind where they're going and how they're fitting, and also just, I'm just checking whether I need to do any modification. And the first thing I'm noticing is I've got a, a slight curve on the the railings which is making the railings want to kick away. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently run it through my fingers uh, and put a curve in the opposite direction. Okay, so we've done that. I'm going to test fit again. Yeah, that's immediately better. Now Rather than running glue along the full length, what we're going to do is we're going to stitch glue it. So effectively we'll glue a short length, let that dry, um, and then carry on doing that. And that's easy to do with the, with the bow because the bow is coming into a point, which means the etch is always sticking out from the bow a little bit, so you've got easy access to put some glue underneath um, and, and push it home, and we can do that all the way along. Um, with shorter lengths where, where it's straight, then we'd use a different method um, and we'll talk about all the various different methods um, on the upcoming war spike build. Okay, so um, glue, again, 
I don't have a set glue for um, etch. Um, it depends on what I'm doing. I quite like some of the gel glues sometimes because um, they're slow setting. That can be quite handy with parts that you need to um, move around. I've, I've used PVA in my time. Um, yeah, it all depends on, on, on what you're gluing, how structural it is. Um, in this instance, I'm using um, a medium CA. Now, some people will comment, I know they will comment, that I am gluing etch onto a painted surface, therefore my glue is only going to bond with the paint. And they're absolutely right, that's exactly what's going to happen. But I'm not planning on swinging on these railings afterwards, so it really doesn't matter. They're going to be there, they're not going to move, it'll be fine. Um, sometimes you need to remove the paint to make sure you've got a good bond, depends on, on what it is. But uh, that's not what we're going to do here. So, going to just dab the end of the railings in the glue to make sure I've got plenty on that, that end and then I'm using a piece of um, wire in, in a drill bit holder just to run some along the length and I now know that I've got enough glue on that be able to hold it in place. Okay, and we'll just make sure it's in contact with the deck. And then I'm about to do something really weird. I just blow on it. And that just helps the uh, the glue cure. Now, I've done that for many years, uh, and I had it in my head that it's making a difference to the drying time of the glue. Um, but uh, somebody else who does um, some ship uh, builds, that, um, if you go and have a look at the the model ship, he's currently building uh, trumpeters hood and has. Um, previously built trumpeters, um, one two hundred tight, um, not Titanic, Bismarck, um, and he has a system where he blows on it using um, a cut off uh, pipette, and he even did a little bit of a, of an experiment to prove whether it made any difference or not, and it does. So I'm not as mad as you might think. Okay, so. That should be glued in place now. Um, you can actually see, I know I said the railing would stick out, but because I've put a bit of a curve on it, it it's not. It's now wanting to stick in, but you know, just to prove me, <laughs> just to prove me a liar. So I don't need glue along the full length of this. I'm basically just tacking it down. Sorry if my uh, fingers are in your view. This glue is one to five seconds, I always give it a bit longer um, because um, as glue ages that curing time can extend a little bit, although this is a relatively new um, bottle of glue. There we go. I'm just going to run a bead of glue along the rest of the length now. And 
one of the pleasures of CA glue is it's just going to sit there and do nothing until it makes contact. So because I'm using a wire and not one of these glue applicators, I'm putting quite a controlled tiny amount of glue on. So I'm just going to tease that down, hold it into place. And then when we paint the railing, that paint will actually be an extra, an extra amount of adhesion for that railing that's now in place. So there you go, that's how um, I put railings on. That one's trying to pop up, let's just hold it down a bit more. Um, yeah, now obviously that's a fairly straightforward railing. Um, it's totally straight, there's no bends and curves, um, but we'll talk about forming all the various different shapes you need from railings on ships during the war spike build as we'll have lots of opportunity there. So there we go. I'm pleased with that um, and that should look really nice under some paint. Whilst I'm putting the railings on and, and adding some of the final um, tiny detail, we're using quite a lot of, uh, lot of super glue uh, of, of CA. Um, and what I like to do when I'm doing quite a bit of work where I know I've got an extended period of time using um, super glue, uh, I tend to have a little tea light uh, going on the on the desk. Uh, and what that does, just just as a quick tip, what that does is it allows me um, as frequently as I need to just dip my glue applicator into the flame and that just burns off all the dried up CA and keeps my, uh, uh, in this case a piece of wire, um, keeps it nice and clean. Um, so it's a really efficient and quick way of, uh, of being able to keep working without having to keep stopping to clean off your applicator. So just to show that um, disaster can happen to anybody, even people that have been making models for a very long time. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's a law for this, um, but my uh, model has slipped out of my hand whilst I was turning it around on my desk, um, and I'm not sure that, that that is, well, it's not repairable really. So what I'm going to do, um, I have a spare, so I'm going to make up the spare, um, which just sets me back a little bit, um, but I think now is probably the time to get it on the seascape so I can handle the model. <laughs> Uh, a bit easier now, it's more delicate. Okay, so let's get this nameplate on. So I'm just using my glue applicator to put a tiny amount of glue in the location there. Hand isn't very steady today for some reason. Probably because the camera is running. There we go. So this is a medium glue and it only needs a blob and again I'm going to reiterate I know I'm gluing to paint but this isn't structural so it's not going to make any difference there's no nothing ever going to touch that again and then we're going to use a little wax pencil just to place it on there right so I'm just going to check that's nice and straight There we go. See if I can get that a bit closer for you. So I think that looks really good. Um, adds a little bit of detail. Um, really brings the model to life. Okay, so I've managed um, to um, nearly destroy all my hard work on the model twice now. I've dropped it, um, or it slipped out of my hands twice. So I've decided I now need to put it on the seascape um, just so I can handle it uh, a lot easier. Um, so, let's just quickly talk about the seascape. 
Um, this is a picture frame um, which I bought in a supermarket, um, very relatively cheap. Um, and then what we've done is we've put some um, on the glass. We we've, we've um, glued over over the top of the glass. We've glued some. Uh, paper. Now this is um, artist's um, watercolour paper, so it's quite thick, but what it does do, and I don't know if you can see that in the light, it gives you this nice sort of still water appearance, uh, quite naturally. Um, so we've then painted the um, surface, and I'm just going to remind myself what we did. I did some little experiments with different colours to and find what I wanted. Um, and we ended up going with um, a third pale green, a third Mediterranean blue and a third dark sea grey. Those are all Vallejo colours. Um, so yeah, so we looked at what we, what we were trying to achieve and that, and, and that looked slightly blue, slightly green. It sort of ticked all the boxes for me, if you like. So that's where we're up to now. Um, the intention is that we're going to mount the model in there. We're just going to use some PVA glue to do that. Um, it dries clear, so I'm not worried about it. But also, um, as part of the process of creating the seascape, I'm going to use this stuff, still water, and, and fill this with the still water and try and uh, give this a little bit of depth so it, it looks a little bit more like, like water. We're, we're going to do one or two other things as well, but we'll, we'll talk about the seascape in more detail in, in another video. Uh, so I have used this product before, but only for, for puddles and, and, and that type of thing. So I've never used it on a large scale like this before. So it'd be interesting to see how that works out. I could, I could be wrecking everything. Um, but anyway, let's get on with getting this model on here so that I don't drop it again um, because I'm that close to the end it would be a real pity if um, I then had to start reconstructing it because I've broken bits off and some of that etch I can't replace I'm lucky with the ladder I'm not lucky with things like the radon tower that that would be the end of the model so I'm just gonna go roughly around the edge um, so I drew an, uh, the outline of the model before we started building it on this piece of paper. Uh, that's how far forward my planning went. So I know that this um, outline is pretty much bang on. But like I say, because this is going to dry clear, and I'll take some of that glue and put a bit extra here. Um, and because we're going to be putting um, a small wake in there and, and some bits and pieces, I'm not at all bothered about the PVA uh, showing through. Right, let's see if I can pick this up without dropping it. Now we're going to put it on the stern first and drag that into place and then plop that down. Um, I can see a little bit of the white there. I will be painting along these edges. So yeah, that looks fine. Now, I have previously checked this and because this is on glass, I know this is perfectly flat and because the kit parts um, came with a waterline version. I know that's relatively flat. I did go over it with, um, once we put the hull together, I did go over it with a large um, sanding, um, a piece of wood with some sandpaper over it and just skimmed the top to make sure it was nice and, and, and even. So as I'm looking at it now, there's nothing that's not making contact with the, the glue or the bottom. So uh, I'm quite happy with that. So there we go, that's the model on there and hopefully um, no more accidents. Now we do have something else to glue in place while we're at it. Um, so we might as well do that at the same time. Um, so that's the little ship's boat. 
Um, so there it is. It's tiny. So some of the glue that's left on my glue spreader, I'm just going to put on the underside of that. Now we can glue that in place at the same time. And I'm not sure what's up with me this morning, but I seem to be being a bit ham-handed. So I managed to, in the process of handling that, managed to break the little figure off that's uh, chugging the boat along. So um, we'll glue him back into place now. Okay, here we go. I think we're going to call that an end for this uh, video. I'm going to make the repair to the ladder. Um, and painting the rest of the railings um, and then we'll come back uh, and talk about the seascape, the helicopter um, and we need to do a legend on the front of here um, and then we're pretty much done so see you next time.